go. Um, real quickly, first step is analysis. On anything we're drawing, let's, uh, let's look at it first. Let's spend some time analyzing what we have. Uh, we're going to emphasize what Jared started talking with you about this morning, which is using sections, cross sections, to, to draw things. And this first item is a teapot by uh, Russell Wright from the 1940s. And um, what we're going to look at is the proportions of this teapot. One of the things that makes this easy to draw is there aren't many details on it. One of the things that makes it hard to draw is that there aren't many details on it. So you kind of have to find relationships in space because there are no edges. There are no corners. There are no crease lines. There's nothing really to pull from like we've done on some of these other things. So we really truly do need to look at what the cross section of this teapot is. That is if I took a wet saw and cut right down the middle of this and opened it up and we could look at the interior cut, that's what we need to be thinking about. What does the cross section of this teapot look like? And so really, if you're thinking about that, then the most important <clears throat> kind of analysis view is really the, probably this side view right here. So let me zoom in just a little bit on this. Um, and I've already drawn over the top of this to kind of get a sense of what's happening. This, of course, being a photograph and not actually, not actually a orthographic drawing, but it gets us close. And a couple of the things I want to point out here are that the... Uh, it, the, the, the center line becomes really, really critical. The, the center, center line that's coming right through the middle of the, of the teapot, right through the handle, the lid, and through the base. This vertical center line is really the axis by which this whole thing revolves. And that is the right way to think about it, is a revolve that has a spout and a handle stuck on it. Uh, because you can see here I went and sketched and kind of drew in that shape as if it was revolved all the way around. And we need to kind of think about it that way, even though technically there is no boundary right there, this ends up being a really nice blend that you don't see any, uh, there is no line on the product right there. In fact, most of these lines don't exist on the product. Uh, the other thing though that I really missed in the first sketch, in the first session that I'm gonna try to do better on this one with, is the mass of this is a little bit high. If you look at the, kind of the, the fatness of this is shifted upward. It's not down low, it's not squatty, it's actually uplifted a little bit. And you can kind of see that, um, you know, looking at the side view of it up here. The other thing is the handle. The handle's fairly large, steps up. It comes up above first and then rolls around kind of in a parabolic quick turn at the, at the rear. There's, and again, there's really never a flat on this. It's, it, it rolls lightly, and then it rolls fast, and then it rolls lightly again, but it, it's kind of in this continuous state of, of change. It's not really ever flat. If it's flat at all, it's flat a little bit maybe on the upswing right here. Um, and so this, this handle's fairly large. It sticks out fairly prominently. Uh, if you look at the top of this, I'm gonna try to hold it with the lid on you'll see how big it is, round in this dimension. It's actually quite fat in this dimension, uh, which is not the main dimension we're gonna look at it in, but just realize it's got a lot of mass. It's actually quite, quite large and round, a little bit too round in my opinion, visually from the top. Um, but it's really this side view, I think, that is most important to study, to understand, and in, in, in us laying this out in the first section, what we kind of discovered was that you could almost, if you took what I call the belt line, that is the center of that tangency of that shape. Look at how that shape rolls around the main revolve and kind of strike a line through that where that tangency reaches that center. You almost can divide it equally left and right. Well, you, would, you would divide it equally left and right for the revolve, but you could almost divide uh, this is a little bit of a squatty square from midline down, and it's probably from here up to the main mass, or even up to the top of the handle, is almost identical in height from here to the top of the handle. So it gives us kind of a, a sense that, oh, if we build something a little squattier than a square and duplicate it, that gets us from the very bottom base 
up to the top of this. The top of the handle comes up a little bit taller, so it's a little bit higher than the top of the, uh, T, uh, the lid handle. And you can see how far out this comes to the right and how that center line, we're gonna draw this based on a center line, so a line that runs through the middle of those sections, not, not the sections themselves. Um, and uh, let's get started, because I, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on building this main body first and then kind of grow out. But I'm gonna try to draw this profile in perspective on a plane as a cross section. And then we're gonna try to grow the, the volume and the width out of that after we get that done. So first step, I want, what I want you to draw this from, each viewpoint will be a little different, but I do want you to draw this from the rear, and I call the rear the handle end. So we're gonna actually point the spout away from us. Your drawing should be drawn, you could go left or right, I don't care which direction you draw it, but let's draw it as if you're looking at it, slightly down on it, and, and slightly with this handle coming towards you and the spout going away, either, either I don't care which direction, but not with the spout pointing towards you in the drawing. The spout's gonna be pointing away from you. And the way that I would start this, is the way we've started many of these drawings, but slightly different, in that this center line is gonna be the basis for everything. Instead of a corner, it really just does not make sense to cube out something here because you don't have anything with a corner on it. So we're gonna make this center line be the, the, the main uh, focus uh, starting point of our drawing. So I'm gonna go in, let me back up just a second, get a little more field of view there. And uh, I'm gonna strike a perspective line off to the right vanishing point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead before I do anything else and do a vertical line that's gonna be, end up being my, my center line. Didn't do that very vertically, but center line there. And um, just, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of estimate, give me a, really not estimate, but give myself a height that's gonna fit on my page. I'm kind of fitting the drawing to my page right here as I, as I design kind of my perspective system. And so I'm gonna put some convergence on that. I'm gonna say that point's rolling off the other way and let's, let's just put, put a, a ground plane on here and let's make sure that converges off to the other side. So this, I don't think I hit that quite high enough. Let me try that again. Lean that in a little more. Okay, so instead of an outside corner, we're kind of working off of an inside corner, two planes that are bisecting each other. Essentially the same thing, but just looks a little different. Okay, when I get that started, I now have to draw this side profile facing the other direction, but on this, this long plane right here, with that being the center, okay? Let me see if I can pull this into the field of view just enough for you to kind of reference it a little bit so you can kind of see some of it there. Um, and let's go ahead and say that I'm gonna call this the top of the, the lid handle. <clears throat> And beautifully, uh, we actually have a nice ellipse and base that's right here uh, shown on the bottom. Uh, what I'm gonna do is actually start to think about, you know, how wide is this base? You notice this kind of rolls around and then turns back under, kind of switches back right there. This diameter is really close to the diameter of the lid. They're almost the same, and that's why I struck these two lines up it's almost like a cylinder between that foot and that lid diameter. They're almost identical, really close. Close enough that uh, I'm gonna say they're the same. And uh, so I'm gonna kind of start by looking at the height of this. You know, if I say this is two units high uh, from the top of that lid to here, well then the width of this really ought to be about as if this is a square. So I'm gonna say that's the height, that's the midpoint, and uh, all I really have to do is now estimate kind of what a square is gonna be 
Uh, now in this case, the square is centered, so the square is gonna be splitting, but right through there. And if I did that right, if I get the proportions on that right, this actually becomes the boundary both for my bottom ellipse, for the foot, as well as the boundary for the top ellipse for where that lid falls. Now remember, this goes to the top of the handle, not to the top of the lid. The lid will be a little bit lower than this, but we'll get back to that in a second. Um, so that gives me point one and two of my profile, my, two f my foot. Uh, I know that the top of my lid is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball down a height for that thickness of that lid because I feel like it would be good to go ahead and get that kind of the top of my lid figured out. So I'm gonna say the actual handle height, I'm gonna step back down into that, come to right there. And um, again, that's just estimated, but that gives me kind of a, a sense of where that would be. Um, and uh, I know that the lid has kind of an arc to it. So notice it's not actually totally flat on top. This whole thing is fluid. All of these will end up being nice splines. So I'm gonna put a little curvature in it just to start, just to give me something to start with and say that this is kind of the top of my lid. And this is essentially the bottom of my foot. And my footprint, let's go ahead and do this. Let's put the little the actual lid handle on here. And again, I'm estimating, but this handle rolls. It has a radius here, it rolls in and rolls back out. Now remember, I'm drawing a cross section, I'm not drawing the outer boundaries of the teapot. I'm trying to get my cross section to be the correct proportions, because if it is, the rest of the teapot can flow out of that and it's less likely I'm gonna make some sort of major proportional problem come out of that. So I'm going to essentially start right there. There's a cross section for the lid almost. And now let's, let's talk about width a little bit. How far out <coughs> this direction should this tangency come? You see, see how this rolls all the way around and that rolls all the way around from center line, funny enough, from center line all the way out to this tangency is also almost a square. Not quite, but actually it's pretty close to a square to the height of the top of the handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, extend that out. Now I could use a diagonal measuring method here, but I'm just gonna start to feel where that square would be. And uh, I can do the same on that out, outside. Now, notice I'm foreshortening this. I'm actually dropping the width of this last designation out here so that it, it looks like it's in correct perspective. If you're not good at that, then do your diagonal method and plot those squares out to where you kind of get something that's closer. Um, it's important to note, again, that this square, the top of it, meets the top of the handle not the top of the teapot lid. The teapot lid's a little bit smaller, sh shorter, so um, that's, these are important. Let me just kind of draw these a little bit more heavily here where you can kind of see. Does this make sense so far? I'm just using squares, not really cubes, but square subdivisions to give myself something to cite to. Um, and my handle, I'm gonna put my handle out here and the spout down on the far end here. Um, which first? I don't know that it really matters. Let's stick with the handle because I know I'm, I'm gonna hit, hit a height that um, comes up just above this line, okay? And if I, if I bring this one unit over, that ends up being about where that tangency spot is. So my handle is gonna hit essentially pretty close to where, but slightly above actually, right about here. Just a little <laughs> bit above that line so this is my next point. And what I'm plotting is right here. I'm kind of figuring out where that high tangency is. Um, and I'll come back to that. Uh, by, I'm gonna step on over another thickness here. This is probably three quarters of what that cube was. It's not another full cube width, but it's, it's 
major portion of it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that out. And again, I'm, I'm just estimating it based on what that previous square was and, and subtracting a little off because it doesn't step out quite as far. And so I'm going to say that, that, that uh, this point, the point of kind of tangency reached here, isn't at midway. It's not. It's higher than this, right? So it comes up about a third up from here. So it's going to land right about there. All I'm doing is giving myself these kind of points to guide me in proportions. Um, yes? So on the, the one that you've drawn over the, the photograph, it's yeah. like from the center line that cuts through that there is a square over. Or yeah, it's, it's a little bit squatty square, but yeah, so over. On your drawing, it looks like you have your center line and then half your square and then uh, let me see. You may be right. I may be mis mismeasuring it already. I got the split square here. I got, you're right. I didn't subdivide through there, so I end up with, you're, you're right. I think I'm about to make a mistake. Hold on. That, you're right. It's a half, it's, it's a half unit right there. You're exactly right. Instead of that point being there, it should be right in here. Good call. I'll tell you what, I was about to discover it myself because I was feeling that was distant. And I wasn't sure why yet, but as soon as I would have started to draw that vertical line, I would realize it wouldn't hit on the teapot where it was supposed to. And that's when I would have had to back up and said, OK, you're right. Yeah, something's out there. So yeah, instead of being there, that point is going to be right about here. Did everybody follow what he's saying? This was the point I was trying to hit and I was looking at the wrong subdivisions. You can draw too many lines sometimes. And I'll be frank in saying, I struggle a little bit with even drawing it the way I'm showing you, because part of me wants to just like get this out and draw it the way I see it. And constructions, constructions complicate things. They can help you if you're stuck, but they can hinder you if you kind of know what you're trying to hit and you start worrying too much about them. And here I am trying to tell you how to use the constructions and I was missing an increment there. So good, good catch. So yeah, right in here, let me double check that. It's like one square unit off and higher. So yeah, I think I'm closer now to what the correct should be. Good call. And in, in keeping with that, this point is out too far as well. So I'm going to need to bring it back. Uh, about a three-quarter increment from that. So I'll draw me another vertical line here, and it's going to land a little bit, probably a little lower than what I had, probably somewhere in there. So i got to make sure I'm going to the right lines. I'm going to actually put some little vanishing lines on here to kind of make sure I'm hitting my targets, make little targets out of those. Okay, good call. So tangency, top, height of handle. Now I need to know where it's coming in at the bottom. It's a little harder to see that point, but it drops about a third of the way down, not quite half the way down that bottom unit. And it's pretty much pretty close to in line with that top tangency. So I could almost come down from there and drop about a third. And it's probably going to be somewhere in here. So you can kind of see, again, this is a center line. It's not, it's not going to be the actual um, shape. It's not going to show up in my outer boundaries, but it's the center line. All of this is still on that middle plane that I'm trying to draw here. Um, I'm going to come out a whole unit, which I, I think would now be right here. This ends up being kind of the the boundary that the, the curvature is going to follow. I'm going to go ahead and draw this curvature because I think, again, if I have this drawn, I start to see more of my teapot. So notice again, this curve kind of, it's small right here. It turns hard and fast and it rolls big. And again, the mass of this is really up high. So this is what I missed the first time. I didn't make this mass up high enough, but I'm going to get it right this time. I have a feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and Strike this. Try to draw a nice full curve. 
and then turn it back. It turns back right at the bottom, something like that. Um, I could also measure over again, and, and again, I probably have to change increment here because I didn't quite hit it, just to make that symmetric, make sure I hit the tangency out here. I'm gonna make sure that rolls up hard and fast. It's gonna come out and hit this point out in space, and I'm gonna have to roll this harder than I had real hard. I need to work on this. I didn't quite get this. This rolls out faster. Has a little more roll to it than what I had. <coughs> so what I'm trying to do, and I'm, you can see I'm tuning it. I'm moving now beyond my tick mark to try and make that curve look right. There's this constant switch back and forth between trying to look at that teapot, trying to be accurate to that teapot, and then going in and saying, all right, I'm gonna be accurate to my drawing now. I don't like the way my perspective's looking and I gotta fix it before I go too much further on trying to mimic the teapot. So there's always this back and forth kind of adjustments, at least with me. Jared may be able to hit it exactly right the first time, not me. I have to sit there and fix things as I go. Um, so let's, let's say that I'm pretty close to the revolve, and I'd say the mass is a little high on that. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, maybe even higher than what I drew. I may have created a little bit too much gap here at the handle, but this this gets it pretty close. I might actually roll this even just a little more, just although the spout's gonna blend out on some of that. But uh, that's, that's pretty close. Let's go on and draw that center line of the spout. So the spout, um, it sticks out a little bit beyond. So if this is the, I'm kind of opposites here. I don't know if y'all can see. So if this is kind of that area where the spout's going to be, it drops. It doesn't actually go to flat, but it kind of spills out of that curvature and drops just a little bit, not much. Uh, extends out beyond that tangency, and it extends out about another half, half unit of that square, so probably, probably not far from where I am right here. And that um, gets cut back. I'm estimating that angle, but it's essentially, it's not, it's not a, a flat spout, it's actually cut back at an angle like this, right? So we're having to kind of show that. I also know that this is going to come back and roll into this shape rather quickly, actually. And I can go in there and blend that in. So again, what I'm doing is drawing a cross section on, of this teapot on this middle plane. And um, you should. Just look at it for maybe 15 seconds. Yeah. All I'm doing is using increments to kind of estimate. And I'm about to work in here to the handle next, the, which is getting really close to me. One of the things that I'm thinking as I'm looking at this too, I'm questioning things. I'm starting to feel like in this view that my base is too wide relative to my hole. I look at my base here. Now again, I've been sitting here doing the increments, laying it out, thinking I'm okay, but I'm thinking I'm gonna change it, adjust it a little bit to, to shrink this um, just to kind of compensate for that a little bit. It's, it's minor but it's about getting those proportions just right. And I think that that's really kind of the key here is to try and fix it while you're in the, uh, the section view. So I'm gonna just tune that a little bit. It's not gonna make a huge difference at the moment, but it might in a little bit when I get into the, the volume of this thing. Okay. Now, let's look at the section of this handle path. So this is almost like you take a path, a, a profile, and you're sweeping it. In a CAD terms, it would be 
uh, sweeping or lofting a profile section down this other path. And it's this long path that we want to, to create here. Uh, as I look at it, I can see that where this path intersects, the, the teapot is down a little bit from the teapot uh, lid, and the new lid width is right here because I just reduced that width a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of estimate it and say, ah, well, it looks like center line is probably dropping in right around here. And that gives me kind of another, another point to cite to. So I'm going to put a, another star, kind of a target there. Um, so I know that this handle line section or path is going to come, it's going to start here, it's going to work up, it's going to do a hard turn and then sweep out long and then another hard turn and sweep back in. And, uh, and come back in and enter. I have, um, sitting here looking, I don't know why I hit that. I think that might have been drawn before I set this back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, put that line, that target right here. Cause I think that was before we ended up redoing the increments. So I'm gonna come back to there instead of, instead of the top. So I'm gonna just start this line. Notice it comes almost vertical, turns hard, and, and here you can see this one. I actually like the handle of the one we have here in front of us. It's just a little bit more rectilinear in its verticality. So I actually like the way that one looks. But I'm going to use our, uh, sweeps. So if, you, you have a, if you've been struggling to get straight lines, rotate your paper around. It's going to actually help you here because you want to have arcs. And I would recommend you draw kind of through points. Don't worry about those lines going a little long. It actually may help you to draw these lines a little bit better. Um, I'm going to draw another one. I'm going to put a little radius here that represents that turn. I'm going to kind of start it where I can see it a little bit. And then I'm going to do another arc that's kind of bending. And it's going to go up. And I'm going to end up radiusing this off. Yeah, I, I may have to rotate it to the other side here to actually show Perfect. it. Thank you. Folks, there's something not right here. I'm just trying to figure out what I did wrong. This is way too long of a segment relative to that or even the one that's in front of me. So let's just shorten it come down a little bit. This is going to come a little more horizontal, which I've just missed a point somewhere here, probably right here. I'm just going to shorten it. Come from that same radius. It's not that everything's wrong. It's just that one line's wrong. So you use drawing to figure out what needs to be fixed. I think this is, stop having this perfection theory that every line you draw, the first time you draw it has to be perfection. Instead, try to, try to grow it out of a set of mistakes, you know? And that's actually much better. I can see already that height of that handle is still above the T line, but is much closer to the proportions. So it's like I'm correcting myself as I go. And then I'm gonna swing this back, back to underneath here, which is a little bit easier arc to hit, I think. may have actually turned it a little bit quick. There we go. That's probably better right there. Again, still drawing the center line here. And I'm drawing my lines a little darker than you necessarily have to because I'm trying to show you the distinction between the section view and the constructions underneath. Um, I'm still not liking it. I feel like somewhere in that process of moving that handle or the width of this that I, I came up a bit short. It feels like that handle section ought to be out further than this. Would you say that that is the direct center of the handle? Yes, this is the center line of the handle. Go like a quarter inch or a yeah, there's going to be width on either side of this okay. and thickness up and, up and below it. So yes, this is still center line. But even with the center line, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with it feels like this elbow ought to be back towards me a bit more. It feels like this is more of a horizontal handle than what I've drawn here. 
and uh, it would be compressed in perspective a little bit, but you know what? I just, I like to fix things as I go, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a little bit back in. I just, I feel like it needs it. Yeah, draw this, draw the handle. Don't, you know, Shay's, Shay's trying to show you the procedure, not necessarily the geometry. I mean, that's the... There we go. Okay, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna stick with that. I'm still not totally happy with it. But I've got the section drawn now. Anything else on the section I need to put in? I don't think so. And I'm gonna try a slightly different technique. I, there was something that I didn't like about the first one I drew that uh, I think might get resolved a little bit better on this one. Yeah, the, the, the first thing I'm going to go for are, the, are the, the easy wins, right? You go for the things that you can hit easily and help you see things better. For me, I have three easy wins on this coming up with ellipses. Easy win number one is the base. This is planar. It's one of the few planar things on here. The bottom is planar, right? It has to sit on a flat surface. I know that this is going to be an ellipse that crosses through these two points. So I'm gonna to wanna to put an ellipse here pretty quickly. That's gonna be my number one ellipse. My second ellipse, which is very similar, my other easy win is gonna be the ellipse that's used to separate the lid from the, from the teapot. And um, that's also gonna be fairly easy. And the third are the ellipses used for the little handle lid, or handle on the lid. Uh, those aren't going to help me so much in my geometry, but the, these two will. So what do I do to get those two ellipses, or th several ellipses? Well, uh, the last one that I drew, let me show you where I was on the, on the previous one. The last one I drew, notice how large the handle became here. I actually don't think this is as off as you think. I actually had more issue with the shape of the bowl here. Felt like it was too, f too low, right? But look at what we did. We actually drew, we actually drew a square footprint for this ellipse to sit in because it gave me, if, if this is my center point, and I know it's got to hit these two boundaries, those two boundaries are not my major axis. My, this ellipse is going to push out on either side of those, but it's going to pass through them. So when, if, I'm, if I'm trying to actually figure out the boundary of that ellipse, the best thing to do is to come in here and to draw those, those lines to that left vanishing point and to try to draw a square footprint to, uh, what do you call it, is this circumscribed to put, it, put, put the ellipse inside of? Does that make sense? Do you see what I'm doing? And I did that by chasing my vanishing points, laying that grid in. These actually also help you ground the drawing. They're gonna look like there's something on the ground here at the end. Once I do that, then I start to, to develop this ellipse. And I, again, I would do it very lightly. You're trying to make it pass through those two points, but they're not, it's not ending at those two points. It actually comes out beyond those two points. Something like that. It's very soft. I haven't finished this yet. This is, I'm going to be coming back and working on this in a minute. And the only part that's really going to show is this forward part because it's, it's out in space out front here. So there you go. There's easy win number one. Get that ellipse put in. The next one is up higher. It's going to be thinner in degree but about the same width because again, these, the, the width of these was very, very similar. In this case, I'm not gonna measure. I'm just gonna try to hit these two points and make that ellipse, keep it horizontal, make it work through there and make that degree a little bit thinner. I don't think I hit, I don't think I hit vertical there. I think it's kinda, there we go, that's a little better. And then I'm going to go up here and do the same thing on these to give myself the beginnings of what this handle is going to be. Again, the degrees will be very similar here. The all thin degrees because they're getting closer to the <coughs> horizon line. But 
Then I come in and I can fill in the very first part, the very first part of what my final teapot will be by rolling and using these ellipses as the curvature. Y'all following that? That top ellipse I put in, I put in a bottom one a little bit lighter, and then I, at that point, I, I essentially looked and saw what my profile's doing, and I, I hit to tangencies on that ellipse. Now I have the very first part of my 3D-ness is starting to show up here, uh, and that is right there on the lid. Does that make sense? And I could come in here and start to darken this in, but because this ellipse rolls around the backside, and I know that the volume of this, this is the trick. Remember, we're still looking at a center line here. The volume of this is considerably on either side of this center line. So this line means nothing other than giving me proportions and kind of seeing tangencies to roll to. The next thing I'm gonna do is put in an angled ellipse that represents, or again, the minor axis of this ellipse is actually shooting off kind of in this direction because it's an angle. This is gonna become the spout. So that minor axis is shooting off in this direction. And I'll end up only really using the outer part of that ellipse as part of that spout. But it, it sets me up there where I now have a point and a point that will um, become part of this volume. Now. I was at pretty much this point in the previous drawing when I took a path that I'm going to change on for you guys because I think I'm going to just see if this helps me hit some things a little bit better. One way that you could do this is you could take now another perpendicular plane, draw a cross section this way, and draw it this direction. That's what I did in the first drawing. So I ended up, first drawing I drew this plane that's working this direction, and I drew this cross-section roll out and that cross-section roll out and did the same thing in the other dimension. That's one way to do it, but it's important to note that neither of those cross-sections actually get you to the outer geometry that you're having to draw. They're both guidelines. And I think I screwed that up by doing that. And I think, possibly, I might get it more accurate to simply use ellipses to build out volume vertically to the width that I need. So I can look at this, I can look at this teapot and I can say, you know, you know, it's thicker up here. I know where that belt line is. I know the widest ellipse is gonna have to be kind of in that middle area. I know that, um, you know, it gets back to this ellipse at the top. It gets back to that ellipse at the bottom. What all I really need is to decide kind of how wide that widest ellipse is from here to here and maybe just try to grow it with ellipses. So let's see if I can do that. So my, my belt line widest ellipse is gonna have a center point that's right there. It's gonna pass through this point and this point, but not actually, those, those don't help me that much because it's gonna come out wider than that, really. So how wide should it be? Um, this gets a little tricky, and this is where, I, in my mind, I just start sketching. I know it's, I'm, I'm kind of estimating that the width of this ellipse is gonna be a little bit out beyond and try to build and grow this. So again, ghost draw first. I'm gonna get up high on this so I can kind of see it. In fact, it's gonna help me probably to stand up and do this so that I can actually see my ellipse. And I hadn't drawn a line yet, but I can see the width of my ellipse passing through those two lines, through that center line, Let's see if I can get it. It's not spot on. I can see I came out too far here. You know, this is gonna create a problem, right? <laughs> I mean, my spout's right there, my wit's right there. Over here, it might be a little more accurate. I'm trying to figure out why that's so long because the ellipse doesn't look that far off, but I may be out of kilter in terms of the, let me come back in a little bit. And what I'm doing is just kind of laying in ellipses to get a sense of what this should do. It's also 
it's also possible my spout is a little short, that, that this ellipse may be telling me that this spout may need to grow a little bit, and that's possible. Um, it's also possible, in fact, even likely, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about it, it's not necessarily wrong that this would come out wider than the spout. This is what I screwed up, isn't it? This is what I screwed up. My own mind is telling me I'm doing something wrong when I'm in fact doing it right. This spout is sticking out way too far from the body. That's the problem. Look at this thing. Look at the, the photograph of it. The spout is actually snugged into the body. It's fairly close. So no, Shay, you're not wrong by having the ellipse come way out like this. The body is gonna float way past, okay? But it's screwing with my mind. It's not what I expect, okay? So the, I'm not sure if you totally follow what I'm saying, but essentially I'm just realizing that my proportions are actually closer to correct than I thought. And in fact, the other construction I did beforehand was actually off, uh, though it seemed more right. So this is where your left brain and your right brain start fighting you. You start to say, well, you know, that spout sticks out and you think it ought to stick out further than this side, but in fact it doesn't. It actually nests back in. So let's go with what we didn't think was right. An ellipse that does in fact step out like this. And by putting that ellipse out there, I now have a tangency point that I can hit on both sides when I drop from here. So this, this, this line is gonna drop, it's gonna come all the way out and flow back to this point right here, that outer point of the tangency. Let me go ahead and draw the rest of that base so that you can kind of see where we're headed. Let's put that in dark. So I know that the outside, the occluding contour, the outside boundary of this is gonna hit those two points. And it's gonna start, I could just make it kind of start where this lid is. Is it gonna show up on the other side of the lid? It actually might. Kind of making the assumption it doesn't, but it actually could be on the other side of that lid, probably should be. It's gonna roll around it's going to come out to this point. So let me see if I can just begin to sculpt that out of that ellipse drawing. And again, now I'm starting to see the outer boundary of this teapot. Oh yeah. I think that's getting closer. I think the proportions are more correct here than they were on that first one. I don't know about that handle yet. I'm still, my handle I'm still wondering about, but I'm kind of thinking that was a mistake I made on the first one was doing the two cross sections. I like growing out of that ellipse. The ellipse showed me, showed me a optical illusion is essentially what it is. It, it kind of made that apparent to me. But I don't need to get too high on the horse yet. I got a long way to go. So let's see. This now has to come back real hard and fast to hit that. And remember, it reverses field. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse field a little bit to start out, just to go on and get it started. And then try to hit tangency. Remember, this is all real smooth. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting it this time. Proportions are much better. Do you see the difference? Let me show you, well, maybe you'll see it more at the end. Do you see how spherical this one is? That the body is so spherical. But on this one, it's really much more, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there is a big difference. This one, it's got some weirdness to it that, that I think, I'm not saying I got it all right here, but I think I missed, I think that problem is, is getting fixed. And I'm gonna roll this around, make the base just a little bigger because it looks a little small. We'll come back to that. Now I gotta do this over here. Now on this case, I've got the, the tip, actually the, the spout of this, I already got some of that darkened in, that very leading edge. I'm gonna just take that top and blend it over. It actually, it actually is visible and it blends right over to that. It drops just a little bit, but not much, and rolls and blends in. No footballs here. These ellipses all need to have blends and not points, so make sure it does blend. 
I still feel like this is sagging. I think, I almost feel like this could be even more round than it is. Perhaps more like this. Okay. Now I got a tricky one over on this side because I, I know I got to get way out here. <laughs> and it doesn't seem right, but it is right. I got to get way out here with this curve. And then that curve starts where this tip is. <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to avoid that just now. I'm going to go over here first, get the easy win. And I'm going to extend it from the bottom first because I know I, I more or less have to mirror what's going on here to get up to, to the midline. So I'm going to just take this reverse field a little bit, just like I did on that side. I'm kind of siding to this line. And I'm going to do that same hard turn. Very lightly first, then come back to tangency. And it, those seem to be matching up pretty well. It looks pretty symmetric looking left to right, and it would be right there. So I'm going to darken that a little bit. Now I got my weirdo line here. I'm like, all right, how do I find this? Um, it's, it's definitely reversing field here. I think the first thing I'm going to do is, is kind of mimic what's going on on the top a little bit. I can see that this falls. So I'm, I'm actually kind of mimicking, first of all, if this is a true revolve, and this portion of it is, this revolve is, is going to follow what this is doing on the other side of that line. So in one sense, you lightly just copy what mirror, uh, you know, you, what's going on on this side of the line. I might have cut it out a little bit, but <coughs> let's go like this maybe. Okay, now technically not all of that bulb is there, what I need is to blend this back. And so I'm going to reverse this field really hard. And I'm going to send this line straight up that actually kind of blend it out. And that little trick was what was throwing me on the first one. I just didn't see that spout tucking in like that. But it does. It tucks in. All good so far? I got to get back to that handle. I'm avoiding the handle because I'm not sure about it. But it may come out okay when I get the sections in there. It may just be that the... All good so far. How are we doing? Okay, we got to pick up the pace here. We got another one to do right after this. Next step is to get the handle sections put in. So I know that if this handle profile sweep is this path, and I know that it, it, it enters and hits at the cross section here and here, I know that I've got an ellipsoidal path. So I, I honestly look at the cross section of this handle. I've got a very flat, thin handle. This is easily twice thickness, and twice width to height, maybe even more so. It's very, very thin, but there's no flaps on it. It stays ellipsoidal. So I'm gonna just say it's at least two to one on ratio, maybe two and a half to one. And I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to put a, an ellipse that represents that proportion. Essentially, almost, it's not technically on a plane. It's actually resting just on that surface. But the center point is right where that intersection was that I created. How did I decide what angle that ellipse needed to be? I kind of just pretended that was about a 30 or 40 degree angle plane right there because it's kind of dropping, but it's still fairly vertical. So that's a little bit eyeballed. I'm going to do the same thing again down here, but in this case, so I need to use the same size, the same width ellipse. In this case, I am going to use more of a vertical, almost like it's on a vertical plane. Technically, it'd actually be turning back up underneath. But these are really more to give me a starting point to draw to. I need to see kind of what my width needs to be. And i got to have something to go on here. Technically, that ellipse would be bent and rounded around the shape. It's not really on a plane. But you know what? We're, we're freehanding. We're trying to get it close. The other ellipse that I want to do is out here on this elbow. And this one really would be like it's resting on a horizontal plane. So in this case, uh,
and it's going to be a little little bit wider because it's uh, closer to me. So the hand, width of this handle is is a little bit wider. So I'm I'm just kind of estimating, but I'm giving myself sections to to try and draw through. Does that make sense? And that may get me in trouble here in a second, but I'm going to literally go from the outer tangencies of these ellipses. And remember, actually, I've fouled this up so many times here, you may not remember which one I'm going by, but I'm actually, this center line right here is the one I'm actually going to work off of. And I'm going to just, coming off those tangencies, kind of replicate that, that shape, that offset, that center line, at least up to the top where there is another ellipse, where, you know, where this height is, there's like another cross-section ellipse here. It's important to remember that that cross-section is in the middle, hitting the center point of that ellipse path. So let's give it a little more curvature than what I gave it there. This, this is a curved, a curved shape. Um, it comes high, then this drops back down. kind of flat right there, and then it rolls, rolls back down. And I still don't have that angle right, and I can tell it's not, but I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to cut to the inside here, maybe not make it quite as wide as I started with, but replicating that shape, rolling up. Now this line is interesting because it starts out as an occluding contour, as a line that has air behind it, a spider line. But, but, it turns into nothing. As it turns this corner, it disappears because technically it's not an edge, it's a radius. And you gotta be careful right there. This happens a couple of times. When you have thin ribbon-like structures like this, you have to represent them with a line, but technically that line gets diminished. So I've started that, I'm working that down. I'm, I'm really not liking this. I think I did the handle shape better on the first one, but something got out of whack on this. So I've kind of worked in the top. I'm about, to, I now had to turn it hard and get it back to this bottom. Again, this inside line turns really hard and diminishes disappears. This outside line is going to stay with us the whole way, but it, it has to turn hard too and get back up underneath. Kind of blends with another line. And then uh, there's a back line that I'm kind of going to have to kind of use here. This almost sights into there. There's a thickness that comes in. And that ends up being what ends up blending around and kind of reconnecting around. Technically, if you were to draw the contour lines of this blend, of this radius, it, it would look like this. You would have kind of a truncated shape, like the trunk of a tree that radius blends into that shape and you kind of see it, it might show up better here, you have an intersection where this blends out into something like that. But technically you don't, you don't really see it. You see it in a highlight, not really in. Now that I've got it kind of started here and this line actually kind of blends up underneath, I'm actually going to come in here and darken some lines because it's gotten a little bit furry, we'll say. Avoid the furry drawings, and that's easy to do with Prismacolor. Yeah, I'm coming back on. I'm, I'm hitting the nuclear bomb at this point, hitting the, uh, the hard lines to try and hide my not so good lines. All those mistakes I made start to drift back a little bit.
I'm also going to come in and darken my rear outer line here, which is kind of tucking back behind there and rolling around. Darken this one a little bit. This was drawn a long time ago now. That lid seems like ages ago. I'm going to go ahead and darken this lid line, especially as it rolls around the front edge and then lighten it as it rolls around the back edge. Wouldn't be quite as, as noticeable. And I'm going to continue this dark line down, feed it right into the base. Same thing here. Now, I'll say this repeatedly. This isn't really the section for shading. But shading can really help. Uh, it can help you hide a few things. I, I'm looking at the shadows that would be underneath this part of the handle because it's contoured that way. And I'm thinking, you know, if I just either thicken those lines a little more or add some shading kind of to the underneath section of this, it, it might help. And it does. It kind of blends out some of that, some of those mistakes kind of helps me see the form a little better. Um, same thing up top here, you know, shadow typically occurs underneath surfaces and things. So the idea that you would perhaps shadow and shade an area that is underneath something else, that's a good approach. I might put a little uh, light cylindrical shade on this handle and again shade it with an arc just like you drew the line that arc shading just adds a little bit of contour so that I can see that and I'm going to actually shade out here on that that tip because that is an unusual little spot and I think shading as if that is a cylinder because it's somewhat cylindrical kind of helps that a little bit uh, and then lastly I'm going to put a little bit of shade I'm going to hit this this uh, baseline a little thicker just to give it some grounding. And I'm going, going to very lightly roll some shadow down low here. This is a little harder to shade, I think, down in here because where do you stop? You kind of don't want to do too much. So I, I'm kind of a believer that no more than 5 or 10% of your drawing really ought to be shaded. If you're really good at shading, you don't have to do much of it. You know exactly where to do a little bit and then you kind of back off so Russell Wright teapot FRE 14 all right which one is better it's always a good comparison. Not as good as my last year one. I totally pegged it last year, but did better in your grief than I did in the first one. This one's closer. So the proportions on that really are, that, that ends up being really the trick is, is feeling that tangency coming out further than you think it does. And this handle's a little too oversized. That one's a little too undersized. The handle really should have been kind of between those two, probably.